Hi everyone, we are getting ready to do our dyeing lab. And in this lab, we are gonna learn all about the way different fibers dye. You're gonna be surprised at the end of this of uh, how complex the dyeing process is. And we always have to hire a technician to come in and work with us because one person can't hold all this knowledge. And you'll find that as we've been studying textiles. What I want you to do is to notice that this is the lab that we're going to be using, the paperwork for that. This is loaded onto the computer and you will be able to read this and do um, your lab a little bit different than this. And that's what I'm gonna show you today along with the way we would normally do it in class where we have access to commercial dyes. So I'll start as long as you can find your paper here. It has all the section for the answers. And this is what we will be turning in either via screenshot or um, on your cell phone, however you can do that and get it to me, I'm good with it. That's our lab paper. Um, in our textbook, in our uh, swatch kit, on page 17 is what we call a multi-fiber strip. And yours is little, mine happens to be really big. Uh, you have a little one included here. And what you're going to be doing is cutting this in half. I know you hate to do that, but the good thing is we've got a picture underneath and you'll have a, just a smaller piece that will show you exactly what it is, but we'll be using this half. When I use my commercial dyes today, you'll be using either food coloring or um, a strong black tea, the drink tea that you might drink, you will be using that uh, for your dyeing process. So yours will look a little different. That's why I want to show you what commercial dyes look like. This small piece here of multi-fiber fabric runs about $45 a yard. It's really expensive. And that's because it's specially made for testing in the industry. So we're going to be working with this today. If I look at this strip, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different stripes. And they're slightly different in color because each one is a different natural fiber or synthetic fiber in its um, original uh, color that it comes out of the spinneret in. So we've got all of that included here. Uh, but some of the, our book talks about a six color and this is one that has just the six colors on it. So we have a six and an eight piece that I'll be dying here and just to show you the difference. But what we'll be answering questions to is this particular six piece because yours is the smaller version of this in your textbook. Just to remind you for information when you uh, go to your swatch kit on page three of your index if you go down to um, your narrow fabrics or N3, you'll see multi-fiber fabric. And so here's some information here, and that has to do with our uh, fabric strip that's here. And this is the one you're gonna be cutting in half to do your, um, your laboratory. All right, let's get started. I think my water's boiling. I'm going to step out for a minute, grab it, and we're gonna come back and get started. All right, I've got my boiling water. Normally we would do this where there's constant heat, but because we're just doing a, a laboratory experiment here, uh, we'll be using boiling water. We won't get the exact um, coloring as if we were in um, a commercial laboratory, but we're gonna get pretty close, at least for you to see. So I'm putting a mixture of dyes in one area here, and then I'm gonna put another type of dye here. This is something I don't want to get on me, so I'll be pretty careful here. Then I'm going to put the water in, the boiling water, and you're going to see it has kind of a purple color to it. About 150 milliliters in there. And then you can see I've done this a few times with my wooden tongs here. We'll get that stirred up a little bit. And then to this one, which is labeled 3A, our dye 3A, even though it's a composition of, of many kinds, I'm gonna add a little bit of vinegar. Now vinegar 
different forms of acid are used to set colors so that their dye um, is more permanent. We all know blue jeans, they can wash out in the washing machine and you end up with blue socks when they were supposed to be white. But uh, different types of acids, which vinegar is an acid, different types of this we can use to set colors, but not every dye reacts with acid. So um, there are a thousand different dyes and they all have to be treated separately. So you really do need to have someone who's been trained in chemistry to help us do our dyeing. So I have a, a six strip and an eight strip here of different fibers and I'm gonna put them in. One uh, set is going in our dye bath number one and another set is going in our 3A. And we're gonna let this set just for about three minutes and let it get really well absorbed in there. And then we're gonna wash it out and we're gonna see what happens when you dye, uh, dye different types of fibers in one particular color. And we'll see how these fibers absorb the uh, dyes separately. Well, we've moved over here to the sink because we are going to get rid of our dyes. Now, the good thing about these dyes, they're water soluble and they're organic. So when I put them down the sink, I'm not gonna be polluting anything. These are sustainable dyes. And I just like to tell students that up front because I don't want you to think you can pour all dyes down the sink. Some of them are uh, very caustic and they need to be uh, disposed of in a certain way. And that's one of the problems we have in the world today that these dyes um, are very, can be very controversial. And the industry itself is learning to police itself globally, worldwide, to make sure that we're not hurting the earth any worse than we already have. So again, I've had these marked. Um, this was the dye without the vinegar. This has the vinegar to set the dye a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna pour this out. And I'm going to start retrieving my multi strips here. Probably have purple fingers all day. But you're going to be shocked even before I wash them. I'm going to show you the color of this. Now, what color dye was it? This purple color. And look at how each of these fibers absorbed the dye differently. And this is something that we really worry about in the industry. If we mix something that's a polycotton blend, polyester is gonna dye differently than the cotton. And so we have to make sure that if we want it the same color, we are going to need to put in special dyes that dye both of them. Now it is interesting because we could do a cross dye where we put um, a fiber, two different fibers into a dye and it gives a variegated color, kind of like our strip here. And sometimes we do that to create aesthetic beauty without a lot of um, extra weaving. We just use the dyes to create the drama in our fabric. Now this is the one that had the vinegar in it. And if we remember that purple color, this one has a little bit more purple. So the acid in there reacted with our organic dyes and they created a little bit more of that purple color. But you can see none of these are exact. I'm going to put them in the water here and wash them out. And we'll be rinsing these. And again, all of this is done commercially in big vats. So your blue jeans, your t-shirts, anything that we're dyeing a particular color, um, whether it's at the yarn stage, at the fabric stage, or at the garment stage, we are going to treat these the same. And we've got to do something with what I call my affluent here. With this water, where does it go? It's got uh, detergent in it to clean away some of the excess dye. If we don't, it's going to rub off on your couch or on your chair or in the laundry, it'll get all over everything else that's in there. So we wanna make sure and get rid of this, but then we also have to get rid of this water. So I've used a, a mild organic soap along with um, the dyes that were organic, and so I can put this responsibly down the sink. <laughs> All 
All right, so this is, when I pull this out, this is going to be our sample number one. And the only difference is one has eight fibers and one has six. And I'll be telling you about that at the end of our project here. But I'm gonna make sure this dies. Now, with your little multi-strip, it's just gonna be about two inches long and very tiny. So you're gonna have to be a little more delicate than I've been with this. But what you'll be finding, whether you use food coloring, just regular uh, cupcake food coloring, or you use a uh, tea bag or saffron, um, coffee is a little bit, you could actually try coffee also, really strong, strong, strong coffee, espresso. Um, but you're going to find yours will be more of whatever color you're dying in, but definitely each of these uh, strips of different fibers are going to be a different tone. If you use red food coloring, it's going to go from red all the way to a light pink. Let's take a look at our piece here that had the, the uh, more effective dye. And I'm going to put that next to this one here. And you can see the different, again, this one has the eight different fibers, and I'll tell you which those are. And this has the six different here. But they all, even though we had the acid in here to help this take more evenly, everyone, even though these are close, they are definitely not the same color. So we would have a little bit in the garment that we were dyeing, we'd have a little bit of, of uh, justification to do to each of these colors before we could send them out through quality control. Well, we're almost at the end of our lab and I just wanted to show you a few things that um, help you understand uh, what we just did. Um, on our dye, this is meant for chemistry, for testing in a lab or teaching uh, young textile learners. Uh, and up here at the top are um, colors and this color band also equates to the fibers here and you could hold a strip up or you could hold a piece of fabric that you just dyed maybe it's something from SAS and you don't know what it is but you want to give it some color you could put it up here and you may be able to come up with a pretty good reason that that's acrylic or nylon or or acetate just by the color that it dyed in this particular dye comp composition. There's also a chart here that I've made for students when you're in class, and um, it also has the different um, colors, one being here for number one, and this was darker one for 3A. So we can see that um, our, we can tell the fibers from this color chart. This is how your lab is going to look, one of the pages within it. It's a two-page write-up. But on this page here, you're just going to be listing the fibers. So I'm going to tell you what these are because you did not have access to the dyes that we used. And so your tea-stained or, or food coloring stained uh, multi-fiber fabric is going to look a little bit different than these. But you can see I've listed these here, and yours is a uh, six strip, so you've got the six different fibers. Um, the top one is acetate, and you'll be able to tell this because you've learned enough already. This is a little bit more shiny. This is filament acetate, and so you're going to be able to tell this is shinier on top, and the one that I'm calling the bottom is a little more fuzzy and thick. And that's our wool strip. And so we've learned the difference between a filament acetate that's going to have some shine to it and the wool, which is a spun fiber that has a little bit of a matte finish to that fiber. So what I want you to do is to the top of yours, if you can't remember from our booklet, um, if you didn't mark that, it's okay, because once it's dyed, you'll be able to see this one is a little bit more shiny and very smooth. Our wool is a little bit thicker and bumpier. So that's, I'm calling the acetate the top and wool at the bottom. After acetate, we have unbleached cotton here, or just plain cotton, uh, but it was unbleached so that it picks up the dye a little bit different. Um, nylon comes next. This is our polyamide, but also known as nylon. So that's 
shows the color there that it would dye with our particular dye that we used. Um, next comes polyester, and then acrylic, and then wool. This had the three, number 3A had the vinegar in it, so it tended to buy, dye with more of the purple coloring in it. But if we look over here to our strip that was labeled number one, the colors are, are much different. The blues are fairly lost in there. So the acid was what allowed the blue dye in my combination to work in a stronger way. But if we look at acetate, if we look at polyester, and we look at wool, these three colors really dyed vibrantly, even on our acid strip. So here you can see these fibers are very bright, and even in real life, when we dye acetate, polyester, and wool, those are very easy fibers to dye. They take rich color um, on um, quite a bit. I'm going to show you the strip that you, you don't have, the eight strip here with two extra fibers, but I wanted to show that to you because there's another fiber that dyes really, really well, and that fiber is silk. Silk takes on a really vibrant color. So if we look here, we've got our acetate, then we have cotton, nylon, polyester, acrylic, and the two that you don't have, silk and rayon, and finally wool. But silk is another one of those fibers that takes on dye very strongly. And so we have to be careful that we don't over dye something or create a color that we didn't intend to. So this is your lab on dyeing, and I think you'll be excited to do it. It shows you, though, the difficulty Again, in the textile industry, there are so many things that can happen when we come from fiber to the completed garment that it really does take a professional. And that's what you're training for. You're going to be the next professional in this industry.